All right, so today we're going to continue on our news site. This is going to be our final day of news site because tomorrow is your interview. We're not doing anything. And Thursday, I wanted to get a little bit into Redux um, just to give you an idea of what it is, like an overview of how to use it and what it is uh, to get started. And then Friday, we're off to do our final retro, and then we're going to go off to Pivotal. So this is the final day of just a new site with, uh, without Redux. So this is just new site five. There's a few things by the end of today that we're going to have. Uh, let me start it up over here. Essentially, what we're going to have is we're going to create a new page called Create a New Article, which is going to show up in our application navigation bar up here. It goes. There it is. So when I go here, it's going to take me to slash add article. And then I'm going to enter all of these things right here. So I'm going to enter some title, a byline of some sort, and this is an abstract. So instead of reading from a JSON file, instead of reading directly from an API, what we're going to do is we're just going to go to slash add article, and we're going to add our own thing. When we hit submit, it's going to give us a little notification that we successfully created it. Go back to the home page right here. And uh, if you go down to the bottom, it says some title, that thing that we, that we just created, some title, some byline, and this is an abstract. So that's the most important thing that we're going to build. Uh, the second most important thing is we're going to just build in a login page, which um, is not going to actually post to, to actually log us in yet. It's just going to be the function, just the look of this page. And then ideally with new site six, we would have, uh, we would have actually implement, implemented this. So two routes today. One is going to be this slash add article. The other one's going to be slash login. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it for today. So drag this and minimize it for right now. Uh, all right. So let's review the HTTP methods, which is good for us today and good for you all tomorrow as you are entering interviews. What are the big, what, are you, what would you say the big five HTTP methods are? We covered this in like week five, a long time ago. Okay, what do each one of those things do? Okay, so a get makes a get request to server just saying like, give me some sort of information back. Okay, that's one. What's a post? Post, uh, post body. Post the body to the server. Okay, so that's using technical jargon to expel, explain technical jargon. What would you say if you had to like real easy for somebody? Writing. I'm writing something. That's exactly. I'm creating something new. That's all it is. Uh, put and patch are synonymous. They do essentially the same thing. There's some minute differences, but what does a put and patch do? Edit something already there. Edit something already there, and then delete is is pretty easy. It's just going to be deleting what's on there. So. Up to this point, we've been pretty familiar with um, things like like a get. We've been using fetch mostly for gets so far. So it's like if I made a fetch request to you know a JSON IP, then I'm going to get some information back. It's going to turn into JSON. If there's an error, I'm going to catch it and then console log that out. So this was the answer to that question that I forgot to answer yesterday. Can you show us what responses are available? On, I'm sorry. What methods are available on response? So, let's just uh, let's just take a look at what response is right now. Mm, I need one more. So I have just a response, right? This is like an HTTP response that comes back from the server. Um, these are all the things available to it. Is that kind of what you're asking? No, I mean, um, that's not promise type. Promise type. Uh, so, so when I do a fetch, right, the fetch returns me a promise. And once the promise resolves, that, that last response right here is what's being saved into the response. So it's kind of like um, you go to the laundry store, right, to get something dry clean. You drop off your clothes. That's this first line right here. I'm like, I'm going to the, to the laundry store and I'm going to drop off my clothes. Then I'm going to get some sort of receipt. That then is the, the promise that, hey, when you, when you come back at this particular time, your clothes will be ready to pick up. You don't know what's happening in the background, 
but you just have a, a like a receipt that's a promise that's a guarantee saying like it will be done by this time and your clothes will be ready because you have the receipt and then you get the clothes and then you do something with clothes yeah. I mean, this, this, a promise line with a little fat show. this is so i think response starts off as a promise and then comes out finally as a actual response So yeah, up to this point, we've just been dealing with fetch requests like this. This is just to get data. Like I, if you notice, I don't have to pass a method or anything like that in right now. It's just, I'm going to make a request and then I'm going to, uh, back, um, did I do something wrong? Response.json. Oh, I forgot a dot then. Okay, whatever. So I made a re I made a request of some sort, right? It's a get request saying like, give me all this information to come back out to the screen. I'm not passing in any sort of like method or anything like that. But fetch goes beyond just a get request. Fetch actually also goes into like all the all those big HTTP requests: the get, post, put, patch, and delete. Uh, real quick, what are the HTTP status codes? Like what, what are the, like, I mean, there's, there's hundreds of them, but like, what are the big numbers that you should be aware of? Uh, two numbers, okay. Mm -hmm. Four numbers are bad. Okay. And, um, 300 three redirects. 300 redirect yeah. and then 500 is? Server. Yeah. Server down or having yeah. to show their side. Yeah, internal, internal stuff. So, this is an example of a, uh, like a, essentially, a fetch post request. So fetch can take care of gets, put patch, post, and delete. So this is an example of a fetch post request. So this first line here, I'm gonna create an article objects. Um, essentially what it's gonna do is, is allow me to grab all the information from my form here. So I just kind of stubbed it out. I created a random test title, random byline test, and ra random abstract. So this looks a little something different than what we had a little bit earlier which was just this. So basically the post fetch request includes headers, method, and bodies, whereas the get requests don't have any of those, any of those things. Well, they can, but this one in particular does not. So first things first, the header is, is kind of like, uh, is, it contains data that the server needs in order to know what kind of data is coming in. Like when you have like a manifest on some sort of ship or something like that, you know what, what that ship is carrying. You, you should have that ahead of time. Same thing when you pass in a, when you create a fetch post request, they need to know what kind of data is coming in, in inside of this request. Then the method is obvious, like what, like what kind of request am I sending over? And then finally, this giant body right here is like, this is the actual data that's being sent through. And all I'm doing is I'm just stringifying the article object because right now when I first started off, it, co it comes in as like a Ruby hash JavaScript object notation. And instead it needs to come through as a string because I can't just pass in an entire, like I can't return it. I can't put it in a hash. It has to be a string. So curiosity, um, request uh, post didn't, didn't require, did it require content type? We were talking about this uh, with uh, some uh, yeah, some places do. Some places like say like you have to tell us what kind of content because we accept multiple types of content. Other places might be like just pass in whatever. We'll figure it out on our end. But most places say I want to be want you to be explicit of like this is the type of content I'm sending over. This is the method. This is the URL. And this is the um, and this is the uh, the body that I'm sending over. All right, so we're going to test this out real quick. Let's see if this works. Why can't I cut? Okay. So I'm going to create an article object. And I'm just going to pass it through and we'll see if anything happens. All right, so I got a promise of some sort. And then once that promise resolved, I got some random 
some random piece of data that came back. If I go into my Reddit page, and I scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see that there's that article that I just passed through, test, byline test, and then the ASDF. So we're able to post directly over to the, to the API, and then this is where we want to end up for today. What happens if we pass in, what happens if we have errors? Like up to this point, we've had everything has been good. Um, but what if we, let's say we create an article and we forget something like a, like a title. So right now I have a byline and abstract, but I don't have this title. As of right now, uh, you have to write this for today's code, but we got a promise to start with. And then when we posted it over, it returned us some sort of error saying like, hey, you have to actually fill out everything. It says there's a validation error. Specifically, um, title cannot be blank. So that's a little bit about where we are going today. All right, first things first, I'm going to get rid of this altogether. I'm getting my three pages open. And I have one just for my Chrome, one for my text editor, and then one for my terminal. So same as usual. So let me just grab all of this, bring it over here. And just like before, once we finish new site four and you're pleased with how it looks, I'm just gonna grab the entire source file and then and dump it directly into this repo. So over here right now, you can see a new site five when you clone it down, it doesn't have a source folder. So I'm just literally going to just copy this and shove it in here. New site four, bringing it into new site five, and now I can bring this back up. So if all goes well, I'm going to run npm install and then npm start, and then we should see everything show up on the screen. This could take 10 minutes, so in the meantime, let's read through release zero. So yeah, as, as, as it says up to this point, we've only been using fetch to make get requests, and that's kind of like the default, like when you click on a link, it's going to by default be a, be a get. But instead, sometimes you want to write and submit data because the web is entire, you can think of the web as just one giant form. You, f you click this action to take you to a form to fill out information, then it redirects you somewhere else. You want to buy something, so you add it to a cart, then you fill out a form to, to, to purchase the items, and then it shows up at your door. So for us, we're basically going to be using fetch to send a post request, kind of like what we saw a little bit earlier. So we're gonna to need to add that into our articles api.js. Is this done yet? Nope. While that's loading, I will look at load up article api.js. I'm going to create a new method here called uh, add article, and it says this function should accept one single parameter, which is the entire article object. So I'm going to create the article object somewhere based on the form. I'm going to pass that into the articles api.js, and then it should perform a fetch something similar to this up here. So we'll do const add article. We're gonna make this, this variable equal to some sort of anonymous uh, function right here. I mean, not anonymous function, this arrow, fat arrow function. Mm -hmm. 
it said it was going to take in an article object. And then I'm going to need to basically make a fetch request, something similar to this. And issue with that. Change the, this up real quick. It's going to be slash API slash articles. Um, and I need to return here. This looks pretty sim pretty simple. Um, and then in order for this to be exported and used in other different other different files, I'm going to need to just grab the export it down here at the bottom. That should do it. We'll find out later. Um, but this is essentially this is essentially just the the API that this is the API method that we need in order to essentially add just add a new article. That's the first part. Second part that we have right now is that we don't have any any sort of URL up here, no button or no new route for like add article. If I go here, it just takes me to nowhere because it's not a recognized path as of right now. So that's the next site for us, next uh, section for us. So I'm gonna leave it up to you to tell me which file I need to add all of this code in. So first things first, I just wanna create a new route. So where do I start? App.js. App .js. All right. All right, so I'm gonna just come down here and then someone's gonna tell me what to type. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. An article. And then what component would you like to have this uh, be directed to? Add article, page. I don't know. Add article page. You can name it whatever you like. I don't mind. Okay, so what's next? So I've added I've added my new route to this uh, to app.js. What's the next what's the next step for us? Cool. And we can also roll over there and import add article. Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. Otherwise, you'd have an issue. But it's like, what is add article page? I'm not sure what you mean. So we'll just call this add article page. And you said to go to source, go to pages, and then create a brand new page called add article page.js. Mm -hmm. Let's see what else we need to do. Okay, so we needed to create the route. Add article page and add article page, add article page, add article page. I don't believe so. Why do you think there's going to be a, um, an issue with? Uh, what was the question again? Is it going to be a conflict because you're naming a page after, I mean, it's probably going to add a JS at the end of it, but. Uh, this one? Or add article page. Yeah. yeah, what about it? I have a method. You have to explain a little bit more. I'm not I'm not totally I'm following. The variable space is the I think so. I, I'm not really sure what you're what you mean, but I have this I, I created this extra route, right? So whenever I make a request to slash add article, the component that's gonna handle it is this add article page, which I imported on line eight. Mm -hmm. That means I've created a separate article, add article page.js um, oh, oh, I thought that was, file. never mind, I thought that was the method. Oh no, no, this is an entire, this is an entire page. All right. So once my page component, my route's established, I should add a link to the nav component that points to that page. Okay. Um, so if we've integrated React Bootstrap, our most of our stuff may look like this. So if we took a look at uh, app nav, you can see that this is very similar looking to what we have up here. Um, and all we need to do is just add a brand new link. So we'll just pull this here. And shove it down here. Let's see what this looks like. It could look terrible. We'll find out. So we have here we have our home page and this random add an article. 
And what did we copy over? So we have a we have a a UL which is using a bootstrap kind of like styling, which is going to pull it all the way to the right hand side. And then we have a link, which is something that if we get for free from React Router DOM. It creates a href on the page for us to slash add article, which we've defined here in app.js. And what shows up on the screen is add an article. If all goes well, I can click this. It will take me to an add article page, which returns me nothing. Let's just uh, make sure that we're hitting, hitting the right page. Uh, just grab all this. Um, add article page. Export it down here. And I'm just going to render. Hi. I don't think I need any of this to get started. I don't need a constructor yet. Um, I think I just need, I think this is it. Just to get something out of the screen. Please work, hi, okay. So when I click on business, it still takes me all to all of these different pages. I click on add an article, it just shows me that hi. And then finally for the us, let's create a form that, that has three fields. We're gonna have title, byline, and abstract, um, and also a submit button so that when we, we get all the information, we package it up and then we send it over to the API to show us in the, um, in the actual list of articles. Um, maybe we wanna use, maybe, maybe we wanna use some like form controls for like buttons and spacing and things like that. Um, Let's see. I like this one. Maybe I'll maybe I'll use all three of these things right here. So where is my code for this? All right. Let's just grab all of this. We'll grab all of this for now, and then we'll figure out what to do with it later. Boom! Too much stuff. Okay. I only want a few things. I want uh, text, email address, and password. Uh, text, email, and password, and I'll, I can delete everything else. Oh, good God. Uh, how do I get this? Fix up some spacing real quick. So I'm going to create a form instance, which is going to be maybe I will entitle this uh, title, byline, and abstract. So I'm going to get rid of this uh, abstract. Actually, it's going to be a text abstract. Enter a title. Uh, this is going to be another text field. I'm going to call this byline. And abstract. All right, and I'm going to change a few things. Form controls, text, form controls. I'm not sure how this works. Maybe we'll put byline and then we'll add abstract. No, we don't need this password here. All right, if all goes well, maybe I can just render this out to the screen. Let's see what happens. Who knows? We'll, hopefully we'll get lucky. Bam, everything is broken. All right, so it says field group is broken, doesn't work, field group is broken, and button doesn't work. What? What's that? Import for Bootstrap, yep. Since we're using Bootstrap here, we need to have all these things imported as well. We need to be very declarative. So we're gonna import 
field group, and we're going to import button uh, from React Bootstrap. How about now? You going to work? <laughs> this is even worse. Oh my gosh, many things are incorrect. I expected a string. Uh, I think there's a missing return somewhere. Anyone see anything jumping out at them? What's that? Read the art. Let's read the issues again. So it says at add article page, there is I expected a string for built in components, but I got undefined on line eight. Line eight is broken. Looks like field group is not exactly how we expect it to be used. Um, oh, looks like, looks like this is not actually a thing. Field group looks like a React component to me. So if you take a look at like form like this, you can see that you have an opening tag and a closing tag. Um, this, this is the opening flag, this is the closing tag, button the same thing. This field group that you see right here is just a React component because it doesn't have a corresponding closing tag, like a slash field group to close it out. Looks like I didn't copy everything over. So I'm gonna have to bring this down here. Let's see if this changes anything. Okay, this is even worse. Form group is not defined. Form control, help block is all, all that stuff is not there. So maybe I need to add all these. Form group, control label. Form group, control label. Form control, help block. Actually, I don't think I need this. All right, we got something on the screen. We got the title, the byline, and the abstract. I mean, you can do different things, right? Like you didn't have to use the bootstrap one. You could have just typed it out yourself. Uh, in fact, if you prefer, I do have a solution that just has, uh, it just has a form. Can I put a container on the con return div here? Line 43, container. Oh. I, I don't know. Oh, you're saying, oh, can we make it not look like garbage? <laughs> yeah. Infinity and beyond. Hey, Yay. all right, we got something. All right, so this is fine. Let's see if we, like when we submit this, uh, let's see if we can just get the title, the byline, and the abstract. Um, so I think we have this, this little bit right here. So we have this on submit, we can handle all of this. Um, and then pass it back up. So where's my form? Just add it right here. So when I submit this form, I'm gonna I'm gonna instead hit this uh, hit this handle form submit function right here. So I know that it's going to take something. Uh, let's find out. All 
All right, so if all goes well, I, if I once I hit the submit button on this, it's going to bind everything in, and then I can hit, I can take a look at the event target elements value. Let's see if this does anything. All right, hi there, hello, buenos, buenos. All goes well. Let me clear the screen on the right side. Hit the submit button, and it does something. I got the high there, and then it immediately took me back over here. So what happens immediately when you have a what happens immediately when you submit a form? What's that? You do that to prevent default. So prevent default, and then let's see what we've got. So I'm gonna just gonna go. Hi, bye, hi, hello, just to get three different things out there. So I have the first thing, which is hi. Can I get the second and third thing as well? Change this to one, change this to two. The page will refresh because I've changed it. Clear the screen. One, 12, 23, 34. 12, 23, and 34. So I'm able to get all of these things right here. So I, I have I've created the form. When I submit the form, it passes it back upwards to my, uh, to my handle uh, form submit. At this point, now I can make my request out to my API in order to save it in. So I wanna create some sort of object that looks like this. It's a, it's a JavaScript object that has a title, a byline, and an abstract and then I need to pass it down in over here. So let's work together because I, I really don't know what I'm doing. So how do I, how do, I do anything on this page? Sure, yeah, let's create an, uh, an object that does that. So uh, maybe a const, we'll call this uh, article object or something like that. And we have a title a byline and abstract. All right, so the first thing is the title, second is the byline, third thing is the abstract. We have those three values right here. So title, byline, and abstract. All right, let's, uh, let's do go step by step. We'll just go console log of article object just to see what we get. T B A. So we have a title with a, uh oh, this is gross. Instead, I have title being input forms control, form control. Ugh, this, is no, this is no fun. We're going to be rid of the value on purpose. What's that? We're going to be removed the value for some reason. Did I do that? Did I do that by accident? Oh, my bad. <laughs> my bad. Like, what's this, is a trick? Is that... No, it was, on, it was an honest mistake. I was like, this is gross. What did <laughs> I just say? <laughs> well, those are objects built by, by um, Angular that you can use to get the value. Accurate, yes. Yeah, I, I, I just forgot to put the dot value because I was like, this is not what I expected. Hopefully someone can save me. I appreciate that. Um, so we'll just do one, two, three, submit. We have a title of one, byline of two, and abstract of three. So we've created the object, and now we need to shove it inside of the, um, now we need to actually create the article API from here. I mean, we've created it. Now we need to just bring it in. So we're almost finished. We have a add article page here and we have an articles API over here. So how, how do I first bring in the articles API into this particular file? Yep. So I'm gonna import articles API uh, from, and now I need to figure out how to get from here all the way into here. Yep. 
So uh, our uh, import on the on these is it's just the actual file name, right? So because you're giving it the you're just telling the location, but that's actually just the file name as well, right? It's not so like you I can I, I can literally call this poop. Like it's uh, you can import it as whatever you'd like. Generally speaking, the convention is to name it name it the same thing as the name of the file, but you can import it as whatever you'd like. Because sometimes we're doing them in curly braces, like if they're mm -hmm. actual like elements and stuff. Correct. So there's a few things. One is this: I'm bringing in the I'm bringing in the entire file from right uh, from here. Now everything inside of that successful. Everything inside of the or export. Another thing from an NPM. So for this one on line four, I'm in importing all of Articles API. Specifically, I'm pulling in everything here. Oh, whatever you export. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Now, inside of React, there's quite a bit of stuff. I'm just bringing in the component library. Same thing over here with React Bootstrap. There's you know hundreds, if not thousands, of different libraries you can bring. I'm just bringing a field group and button and form group, just the things I need. And is it pretty like um, irregular for us to be when we have where we npm install, we're bringing all these things onto each, each, each one of these little repositories we're building. We're bringing all those node modules. Is that is it usually like done where you install those things globally, so they're available, um, or is it like inside of each repository you usually bring them all? In? Because there's like a ton of files. In each yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of files. That, like, are you saying like if you take a look at inside node oh, yeah, modules, look at all this stuff here? Yeah. If you try to sync that to Google. Drive, yeah, it's impossible. Run, yeah, like destroy your computer. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of stuff that's being loaded okay. in. Yeah, um, it just I, be dependent on what you're actually doing. Yeah, it's kind of like what do you need in order to actually run your your application, right? I'm not a professional JavaScript developer. My guess is with Node modules, they upload it all into like so that whenever you visit the site for the first time, it downloads all of this stuff inside your computer. So it gives you the illusion of like I'm connecting super fast to it. It's doing all the functionality and make things look super fast and operate really well. Um, and all the heavy lifting is being done by your computer instead. So this is all the stuff is being downloaded into your computer, into your browser. Um, I was like, how many ways to do it? I'm not sure. That's why I said, like, that's my guess. I'm not a professional JavaScript developer. So There's a new version of, like, a gym file. React, React app or something. Maybe JSON is yeah. a file. This is, your, this is your gem file. So it's um, using Bootstrap, anything greater than 337. I mean, what I meant was like in the gem file in Ruby, you're not downloading like every, the entire gem library of all gems ever created. No, it's or just. It seems like in node modules, like you're, you have like everything ever created. It, I know it seems like that, but if you look inside of gem file lock, it's much larger than a gem file. Okay. So gem file lock, it's like if I, if I want to use um, device, right? Device is actually built up of other gems as well so you need to also install all of those particular okay. gems that's specific this feels like, it's like, like this one is much larger it look, looks like that but, okay yeah. cool that's good clarification all right so i've created my article object i've imported my articles api uh and finally i need to bring in this add article so i'm gonna grab this over here So articles API, I'm going to add the article, which from this article object here, I'm going to change this to article obj. And then um, I'm going to get some sort of response back. Maybe we'll just console log the JSON. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to clear this screen out. I'm just going to do, um, you know, Delta Platoon title, bye-bye line, abstract one, two, three, submit it. And I get some sort of response back. If all goes well, can I go to my article page here? Get down to the bottom, Delta Platoon title, and there's everything that I wanted. Uh, just test it one more time. Over here, one, two, three, one, two, three, three, two, one, three, two, one, four, five, six, four, five, six, submit. 
everything goes back to the way it was. Go back to this main page, and then I have one, two, three, one, two, three, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to save us the time for this login page because we can. I, I can tell pretty quickly that you all can add a login page that you know has a form on the page um, to just basically log in. So yeah, that's basically uh, new site five in a nutshell of how to use fetch to you know post to your API, uh, how to bring in fetch and different components to you know to render out this particular nice looking nav bar and then using bootstrap to create a form that we have right here. Um, so yeah, any questions on anything? Is it using, what is it using for the login? Is it using something similar to device? Or? No, you would have to write it on your own. Okay. Yeah. It is, it is going to be just a straight up form. Yeah. What's that? Uh, that's that's a new site six, and so new site six will explain that. Oh, so um, this is going to be like it goes off the nowhere kind of thing. You're just building a form now. Yeah, right now it's just uh, as, as of right now it's it's building a form to nowhere. Uh, so it's just it's just oh. a it, this is just a page. The next day, new site six. If you take a look right here, new site says there's actually um, there's a users <coughs> API. So it's essentially what you would do if you were using like a React front end because React doesn't have a database. It's like, I'd grab all your information, I'd package it all together, I'd send it off to an API, make an API request to like maybe a Rails backend, and then it would say like, okay, this is the username and password that's coming in. Is it verified, yes or no? I'll send a JSON response back to React, and then React will send something else to the screen. Cool. I know a lot of folks use Auth0. 